We have time for questions, so uh, anyone got a question, just put their hand up, please. Thank you. Um, I thought I might share something that I liked from First Dog and the Moon's cartoon today, which was if Malcolm Turnbull is the answer, we might be asking the wrong question. <laughs> And I also wanted to share um, a couple of forthcoming movies. One is called How to Change the World and it looks at the way Greenpeace formed as a movement and um, in terms of PIBCI expanding, maybe there's some things in that, but it's also just inspiring to know the story behind that movement. And as anyone who's trying to... Um, expand a bit on the awareness of the refugee issues in um, Europe in particular. There's also a new film coming out called Simsha, which is S-I-M-S-H-A-R. It's um, based on a true story about a fishing boat in Malta and refugee issues in Italy. And if you can't convince the neighbourhood to have a conversation, maybe you can steer them to a movie and uh, get them a little bit educated and informed that way. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else a question? Thank you. Lady in the front here, thank you. Yeah, hi. Nice to see you. How come I know all of you? Joe, hi. Does this work? Um, Joe, what were you going to say about globalisation? I'm really curious. Oh, right. Well, where are we? Here we are. I was basically going to say it's, it's interesting how... I found it fascinating how we've kind of imprisoned these refugees of Manus Island and Nauru to protect our sovereign borders. The key word is sovereign, that we're a sovereign state and the government's key... Uh, option in life is to key uh, job in life is to protect our sovereign borders but when it comes to protecting our sovereign borders as far as our economy is concerned which basically means uh, the people's jobs and livelihoods we are willing to give up those sovereign rights in free trade agreements where global corporations have the right to sue for loss of profit if a representative government passes legislation uh, to improve the lot of their people, which Im impinges on their profits. So that's what globalisation is about. It's about us actually losing our sovereign rights to determine what happens within the borders of this nation state. Well said. Yes. Hmm. Hello. Hello. Um, my name's Troy. Um, I'm not particularly left-wing or right-wing. I think that whole conversation is so last century. I think it's time for a more sophisticated level of debate. I agree with everything that you've set up on the um, podium tonight. Thank you for the history lesson. I pretty much knew everything. The question I have with Pipsy is what are we going to do about it? What's the goal? What's the aim? Now, given the fact that I believe that governments are a great fiction whereby people live at the expense of everybody else, um, and by your own admission you say that government and our system is corrupt to the core, what's our, what's our aim here? To, to chuck our hat in the ring? To, um, you know, be pigs at that same trough? Um, is that a question to Joe, is it? Yeah, what's, what's, what's the goal? Is it to get um, members in Parliament? And if so, then what's the goal? Well, if you, if you look at the Constitution, we've got three aims. One, we are a parliamentary party, so we will stand candidates in federal elections. Two, we are encouraging people to get involved in the concept of a community boycotts in terms of consumers actually having some impact on what corporations are doing. And the third thing is we're a, di a, di a direct action group. We want to mobilise people to actually take direct action. So in terms of to, to change things, get people back on the streets, get feet on the streets. There are three main aims. So we are more of a social movement than an orthodox political party. That's why our members in Frankston 
uh, stand outside Bilson's office every Thursday, you know, talking to people and uh, raising issues. That's why we encourage the formation of what we call autonomous local groups who then determine what type of strategy they're going to put into place. So it's not just a parliamentary-based political party. I don't care one way or another whether one person is ever elected to parliament. No, Richard's going to have a, a stroke here when I say that. What I care about... What I care about is people taking up these issues and putting the public interest before corporate interests and private interests. And what I care about is us not dividing ourselves on the basis of race, gender, sexual orientation, religion. And if you look at the, if you look at the, we welcome people, you know, religious or no religious bent, irrespective of their sexual orientation, irrespective of their race, irrespective of their nationality, whether they're residents or 457 visas. We have, whether they're on the electoral roll or not, although we need 500 people on the electoral roll to register as a political party, we have membership for everybody who's interested in putting public interest before corporate interest. So we are basically an umbrella group which incorporates people irrespective of their ideological perspective or their religious ideas. That's what it's about. OK, anyone else? Thank the lady in the front here. Um, oh, sorry. Um, a question about allying Pipsy with other existing groups like the Dogs, Defence of Government Schools, like unions. Um, what's your view about building alliances? and having perhaps memberships by unions and other groups? We're based on individual membership. It's the individual that's important in the group. Uh, we don't want some type of uh, large organisation swamping uh, the group. So it's based on individual membership. We have no problem working with any organisation that puts public interests before corporate interests. That's our main aim. So, but it's the individual and it's the branch which is at the root cause. Now, people who are here tonight are here tonight because of the work, the hard work of the Frankston branch, which is what, 48 kilometres from here. You know, they put in their money to hire this room. They've been leafleting outside railway stations. They've been harassing their local member. They've been doing a lot of work, not because I told them or anybody else told them, but because they feel it's the right thing to do today. And it's no point having a top-heavy organisation. You need a decentralised organisation where people are willing to take that local action. Someone else over the side? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hi. Uh, hi, look, uh, Jeremy's my name. Um, I, I missed Jones. I came in late and missed Jones' talk at the beginning. Uh, so, and I'm a bit sick of Joe's voice already. And I wanted to uh, write something. Um, what, what you were talking about before is, is the sense that the vast mass of people um, being ignorant and of, of, of the, the left as a small band of, if you like, the initiated. Um, I, I think that's one of the one of the mental problems. I think that we should should try and free ourselves off a bit because the problem with people isn't so much that they're ignorant as they don't know what to do. So you, you get uh, if someone keeps on talking about a problem which you can't serve solve, uh, it's extremely irritating, you know. And, and I think I think the problem uh, I'm arguing in, in that sense of perhaps uh, m more respect. It's natural. The whole thing about taking an AK-47 to the, the, the populace has been tried before. I know. Uh, but it didn't... It, it has tended Doesn't to work. help less than you thought. No. Then you be less helpful than you might have thought. Uh, so... But the Australian population, one of the really interesting things about them is that they had a surly belief in the mixed economy for 100 years. And we of the left, they fought us off successfully, who wanted to socialise everything. And that, up till about the 70s or 80s, they fought off the right, who, who wanted to privatise everything. Uh, so, you know, I think p people do think about things, and, and there's a lot more knowledge and, uh, and about the, the, the fundamental situation about society than, than people of the left, for very natural reasons, attempted to think.
We'll, we'll take that as a comment. I yeah, think. I Thank guess you very so. Much. No, that's okay. <laughs> but but no, no, great to hear what say, to uh, Look, it's my, uh, my my concern um, is really around issues to do with climate change and um, the limits to growth. Um, now, they're, uh, they're issues that have been uh, talked about for a few decades now. Um, but as I said, it's, those issues are about polar bears. They're not about you and me. And I think, um, I hate this word narrative, but there has to be a story that you tell people. So I, I'm um, hoping to embark soon on a research project which I've called The Last Tim Tam because I figured, uh, I did a back of the envelope calculation and by my estimate, somewhere between 2030 and a couple of years beyond that, there won't be Tim Tams anymore. Um, there, won't be the, uh, there won't be the plastics to wrap them in, there won't be the transport to transport them. There are lots of, there's a dozen different reasons. Last year the American uh, uh, Chocolate Manufacturers Association announced that 2015 would be the year of peak chocolate. Now, I've talked about peak oil to thousands and thousands and thousands of people who, you know, go, oh, yeah. Um, but they'll look at the petrol price today and, it, you know, I don't know, it's $1.25 or something and think, well, what's the problem? Um, but once I started talking to them about things like Tim Tams, um, it was a different issue because you're coming, you're bringing, you're, you're shifting the story into an, a realm that interests them um, and you're giving them a story which they can relate to. So I think a lot of the problems um, that anybody, uh, let's call us progressive rather than left or right, I mean, look, it, uh, these issues generally aren't issues of left or right, they're issues of right and wrong. Generally the left is right and the right is wrong, <laughs> but that's, you know, neither here nor there. We have to tell stories, we have to tell stories. And look, people don't have history anymore, they don't know that there was once a better and different way of doing things. Um, they have an uncertainty about the future. And if we can start telling them those stories, um, you know, a friend of mine uh, lectures in business and sustainability and he had a lot of uh, very ambitious MBAs come to, uh, come to a talk he gave. And uh, he asked them what are, what's important. And after, uh, after a few hours of discussion came back to it, what's important, it turned out to be friends, family uh, and uh, human contacts are the most important things to people. Um, and we've got to tell those stories at that level to people. Well, that's the uh, finish of the evening. Thank oh. you very much. Oh, got, it's just we'll getting interesting. Yeah. Oh, come on, yeah. one up the back. Away, He's time got time a really time long time arm, time give him a question. What time for it is it? Just a, I've got to go. No, we've got, pl no, we got plenty. Oh, no, the yeah. manager said that it was over. Oh, OK. No, no, no. He just told me to come. Yeah. No, no, no. Yes. One more? OK, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, good evening. Thanks for the talk tonight. It was very interesting. Uh, interesting that we're drawing a line between public and corporate. And I've never seen in history where any war has brought upon peace. And we've seen revolutions, socialist revolutions like Nicaragua, uh, Sandistas, initially positive, good intention and then turned evil, per se. Um, as we talk to this whole topic, I see we're talking about symptoms, so income inequality, uh, corporatisation, privatisation. I'm not hearing enough about what the true root causes. Do we understand that well enough? And therefore, what is the treatment? What are we doing about it when we get there? Ooh. Well, I'll, come on, Joan. I'll, I'll come in later. Go on. Okay. Start Look, um, <laughs> Inequality, whether it's in terms of power and wealth, is, the, is at the root of all wars. Inequality. Our struggle is a struggle for equality, not just in terms of financial equality, but in terms of decision-making power. And that's why we talk about things like direct democracy or recallable elections where you can recall non-performing politicians, citizens-initiated referendums. So I think the key to diminishing tension within a society is to introduce structures in that new society which, one, allow people to participate, and two, which allow them to share the Commonwealth, not because of what family they were born into, or because of their occupation, or because of what they inherited, but because they are part of that community. 
So I think if you strike against inequality in all its forms, you can create a peaceful, harmonious society. I'll just, uh, well, I agree with that. And I'll just pick up one early point you made in your question, which surprised me somewhat. You did mention about the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, and you said they started off okay, and you said they went bad? Evil. Well, I was puzzled at that, because mm. one of the reasons that that neck of the woods, including the whole of Central and Latin America, has had problems is blatant interference by the United States. Every time they elect... <laughs> and I, I, actually, I actually went to Central America and I was in Nicaragua at the time of the Sandinistas. I was also next door in El Salvador when the death squads were running riot. It was like dropping into Nazi Germany in the 1930s. It was one of the most frightening experiences I have ever had. And the contrast between the two was just so marked. We had terror, torture of the most debased type, and a terrified populace. And then you went into Nicaragua, it was like the sun shining. And that was because they were then, in the early stages, allowed to develop without that dreadful interference that came later. And uh, it was quite salutary. And it was a, seeing El Salvador was like a very, very ugly, ugly face. It was fascist, of course, and an extreme, I suppose you could say an extreme form of capitalism. But we spoke with everybody there. And it's just, I know I don't want to get off the track too much, but the Americans were actually involved in training the torturers. And we, we heard that firsthand from the people in the prisons and so on. So, you know, you've got to look at the cause and effect, what happens to countries. I mean, some of us here in this room are very actively supporting Cuba because we see that as a very positive light. Now, you know, we're worried. A lot of us are worried now because the Americans have done sort of a deal, and God knows, and they're already... Uh, you've got the uh, US president boasting that they're going to use the, the newly opened American embassy uh, in Havana to try and change the people of Cuba. And that worries us a great deal because Cuba, despite all the terrible things chucked at it over the last 50 so years since its revolution, has got genuinely free healthcare and free education and, you know, the sort of any, anything upsetting that. They, uh, to me, they're an example because they also have been very innovative when it comes to green, uh, you know, the environmental use, and uh, they, could, they could teach us a lesson or two. So I'm sorry if I've diverted somewhat, but I thought the point had to be made. Thank you. Gentleman at the rear there. Thank, thank you. Oh, at last. Oh, yes, hello. Uh, my name's Stephen. Uh, I grew up in Frankston. I'm from Frankston. Uh, I'm not a member of PIPSI just yet, but uh, I'm certainly very interested in PIPSI. Um, um, basically, uh, my question uh, relates to... Well, first of all, an observation. Joe mentioned earlier that a, the second thing he mentioned about what PIPSI is going to effectively do is uh, try and organise community boycotts of uh, certain businesses or industries that, that certainly don't want to involve the public. Um, but just someone coming from Franks and myself, uh, recently I applied for a job at South East Water. Uh, South East Water have built a, a big building uh, down there in Frankston. Uh, I was asked, uh, you know, when I had my last tetanus shot, uh, when I had my last shot of Hep A, Hep B, Hep C, uh, um, um, and, w and when that occurred, all, all my physical injuries I've ever had in my life, uh, my entire medical history, uh, uh, what, what superannuation fund I was a member of, whether that be an industry fund, which is based on workers, which the super monies come from, you know, an industry fund where you're a trade union member, uh, or whether any other fund. Uh, it wanted, they wanted to know about my taxation information, uh, what my tax file number was. Uh, they wanted to know uh, my entire background, uh, how, whether I'd been in Australia or whether I'd been overseas for 20 years. And this was all so I could 
work in the Southeast Water <laughs> call centre for 25 <laughs> hours per week, right? 25 hours per week, part time. So of course, I, you know, I've got a partner. I'm married, um, and I have to sustain her, and I have to keep a roof over our heads. Um, and I just found it interesting that you talked about corporate boycotts, like. How is Pipsy actually going to organise, actually make the public aware, uh, actually bring attention to the public about, you know, uh, whether it be dodgy business providers, dodgy corporations not paying their taxes, uh, and how we can, like, really collectivise and put pressure on these people and draw attention to the public around us that if you want to work in your own neighbourhood, then maybe you shouldn't have to, like, give them your whole life story in order just to have a job to work where you come from. I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Does Gillian want to answer that one? My name's Gillian Collins and I'm the treasurer of our group. Um, one of the things that terrifies me is I stand in line at the grocery store all the time and I see people, not only with bags and bags of plastic bags and crap, but they also, the last thing they do before they go through the checkout line is pick up the Herald scum. It is the largest selling newspaper in this country. I have a sister who reads it from <sighs> front to back every single day, and every single one of her opinions is based on what is in that new whatever we call that thing, it's not a newspaper. But that terrifies me, it's the largest selling newspaper in Australia. We are swimming in a sea of ignorance in this country. We don't have thoughtful people whose ideas are being challenged. That's the one of the things I want Pibsy to do. I feel so lonely down there in Frankston. <laughs> <laughs> and it has been a miracle to connect with people who feel the same way I do. So I think that human connection, Rod talks about telling stories, that human connection is so important that we get to sit around and talk with other people who get what we're saying, that we don't have to explain it so much. So that's why it's important to me. And as the treasurer, we are a community group at this point. We don't have any legal standing, but, but a couple of us paid to come here tonight. And I'm thrilled with how many people came. And if we had a bit more money in our treasury, we could do a bit more of this. We could be spreading our message around a bit more. So if you'd like to make any kind of a donation, I'm on the back table on your way out. So thanks. Okay. Could I just um, respond? Just because we may not get to this, but um, I'd like to draw your attention to um, two campaigns, the East West Link, which I think um, um, you would be very familiar with, but that was a grassroots campaign supported by uh, local councils. Um, they took a caravan all, over, all around Victoria to every major uh, town uh, city in Victoria uh, to tell the people of country Victoria what that would mean to their future. The, uh, the amount of money that would be drained out of, the, uh, out of the Treasury to support that thing would mean there wouldn't be a dollar left uh, for the potholes of rural Victoria. Um, sorry? The caravan's available? Good, okay. Very important, the caravan. I spent a year and a half in a caravan trying to save a house, which we saved. But the other one is Tacoma. The people of Tacoma fighting McDonald's. They did a poll up there, an official, a proper poll in the local area. 95, 96% of people were opposed to the McDonald's. It was opposite a primary school. Um, and yet that building got built and it was the power of um, corporations, but it was the power of VCAT and the building industries. Um, these are the things that you, that you have to fight, and to, uh, the people of Tacoma will win. Um, that business is not doing well. McDonald's couldn't afford to pull out. Uh, that would encourage everybody around the world to, um, to stand against them. But they will win. That will close because it will become unprofitable. It will close in a time when it attracts very little publicity. But the other issue that we've really got to confront, and the Herald Sun is front and centre of that, is this government by fear. We, everybody in Australia is frightened of everybody else. 
Uh, we're frightened of um, Muslims. I, can't, I just cannot. But, oh, this, oh, anyway, um, so fear is what's driving us. You may have seen that Abbott asked um, ASIO to give him one uh, terror-related um, story per week in the lead-up to whenever his election was going to be. It's fear. We're driven by fear and we fear one another to the extent that we're so fragmented as a community we can't engage. Um, and so I think to look at those people like the people of Tacoma, like the people who fought the East West Link, uh, there are ways around it. You build extraordinarily strong communities out of those events. And even if you don't win the preliminary round, you will go on uh, to have a significant impact on, uh, on changing uh, the world around you. So um, study those community groups, not only here, but around the world who've, who've done things and achieved things. Can I just answer? Uh, our friend from Frank's. What was your name, sir? Steve. Steve. Well, look, one way you do it is, right, you, you find, you, you think there is a, a dodgy business or something happening in Frankston, right, that you're unhappy with, or maybe other part of it. The council is subsidising their rent. Yeah, that'd be yeah, right. Yeah, yeah fine. The council is subsidising South East Water's rent. Yeah, so... so privatised yeah. water Yeah. You know what's happened in Ireland? Yeah. Yes, I, I, I think that perhaps there's something that Pipsy could have a look at and uh, take some action against uh, that particular company. And I mentioned before, we, we must finish now, unfortunately, but uh, I'd like to thank you on behalf of Pipsy for attending tonight. You've made the, uh, the meeting very interesting. We've had lovely, wonderful, interesting speakers and it has been a successful meeting. But I'll finish by saying Pepsi is also interested in public housing. And I think this is a major, another major project we have to look at because uh, we need more public housing stock. And uh, this is a, an important issue that's coming in the future too. So look, once again, thank you very much for coming. I think if you want Pepsi to take action for you, the clever thing would be to join and, and think, or think about joining. And if you already join, Perhaps you've got a friend or two that would like to talk and join with you and join with Pipsy. So thank you very much, a safe journey home. And uh, once again, thank you very much for making the meeting very interesting. Thank you. Oh, and, and I've just had a, a message here. I just wanted to put in a commercial. I do hope you don't mind. It's no. not a profit-making one for no. me, but I am selling books of drawings uh, that I did when I was in Cuba three times, and the money will all go to Cuba, and they're $20. There's a few of them over there, and there's also newsletters that, that you can have for nothing. So help Yay. yourself on the way out. Good on you, Joan.